Hi everyone, I've decided to create a short film based on the game Last of Us, and I will create it in Unreal Engine 5. Some of you probably know me as a Blender user, and you probably are wondering, what? Did you betray Blender community? No, 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 no. It's okay. There's no way I would ever betray my favorite 3D software Blender. I love and adore Blender, but as much as I do, I also try to learn something new. So I decided to explore Unreal Engine 5, because you probably seen it, Unreal has been releasing a bunch of coolest videos with the highest quality lately. But the main reason why I chose Unreal is that it's the only software in which you can use metahuman characters. And at the end of this video I'll show you a rough model of Ellie's head that I made. So, I want to create a short film based on Last of Us, and I thought it would take a while. And so, in order not to leave the channel empty all this time, I decided in a way to document the process. So I'm going to slowly show you my progress and how this project develops. But why I suddenly decided to create this short film? Well, because I recently discovered the awesome way to animate faces. Yeah, I animated faces before, but it was just at an average level, let's just say. And now I've just raised the bar for myself. It looks so much cooler now. And I can't wait to show you everything. But first thing first. So, let me show you the old technology that I used. It works using either an iPad or an iPhone. All you have to do is download this program called LiveLink Face. It's free, just like Unreal itself. You just link your iPad or iPhone to Unreal and that's it. Now you can make animations. But the problem with this technology is that it only uses 52, uh, let's just say, face variations. Which is kind of not enough for detailed good animation. As you can see, in this example, my mouse is completely closed, but for some reason MetaHuman still has it slightly open. And when I talk, his teeth are closer together, but my jaw is more open. Well, you see, the program keeps trying to figure out exactly what you are doing, and it does it not very well. Maybe it's good for some super simple and easy projects, but for something more serious, which I am going to do with Last of Us right now, it's not really suitable. I just want to show you a more accurate solution than that. And now about the new way to do facial animation. I don't know if you have heard or not, there's a company called Facegood. They are developing software and equipment for recording and animating faces. And when I found out that their face animation software also has a free version, I was instantly of course interested in it. Just look at what this free version is capable of. So cool. With my old method I would spend two or three times more to do something like that. But there's one problem. For this to work, you have to be able to animate metahuman faces outside Unreal. Right now, the most popular solution to animate metahuman faces is to do everything in Maya. Yeah, Maya is the animation standard. If any new animation plugin is being developed, the first thing that developers think of are Maya users. Because all the professionals work there. It's super easy to import metahumans there and then animate them. And it's also easy to get everything back into Unreal. But for Blender, on the other hand, there's a lot of thinking you need to do. I kind of already figured out how to animate the metahuman's body in Blender, but how to animate the face? For a long time I didn't have any solution, which mean I also couldn't use the program from Facegood. But I didn't lose face, I still kept googling how to animate metahuman faces in Blender. And completely by accident, I stumbled upon one very kind person who posted the solution on the web. So I downloaded the Blender file from the link, and this is what it gives us. As you can see, this is Blender, and this is the face of metahuman with a whole rig for it. 
a working rig, which is the most important thing. Watch this. Oh my god. You have no idea how cool this is. It really wasn't possible for a long time because nobody thought about us. Nobody thought about Blender users. But now... Wow. Look, I can select it all and make it like this. It's just possible now. And it's amazing. For me, really, it's, it's just a miracle. Yes, 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 everything just works. Everything is just perfect. Here's the mouse opening. Just everything you need, yes. And it's all thanks to this person. The link to that Blender file is in the description of this video. And again, thank you very much. Now I can use FaceGood and make even more detailed facial animations for metahumans. So, everything works. I can now animate faces. But, hmm, what am I missing? That's what I'm missing right now. I'll be recording movements using motion capture costume. I'll be walking around, maybe jumping, I don't know. In general, doing something in my costume from Rococo. Previously, I always recorded my face and my body motion separately, meaning after I recorded my body movements, I would then sit still and record my facial animation in front of my iPhone or iPad. That's it. Now I'm making progress here too. I've decided that I'm going to do both action at the same time, so that the animation will be much more natural. And so I wanted to make a custom helmet with a camera that records your face while you're moving around. And first of all, I have the helmet from Snowboardy. I also bought a GoPro mount like this, and also this action camera. It's very cheap, I actually bought an old already used camera. It's called Xiaomi Media 4K. I also bought a selfie stick, but I only need its phone holder. I needed to keep the camera vertically. Usually you attach it horizontally, but I wanted my face to fill the whole frame. And yeah, let's set it up now. Ah, but now if you put this helmet on, it's going to hang forward. So I came up with a super ugly solution for that. I attached this velcro to the power bank and here too. And all that's left to do is just connect them. And that's it. The counterweight is ready. It, it looks terrible, but it works, which is the most important thing. But there's still one problem. Look, right now my face is lit, and when I turn around, it's not. Now part of it is in shadow. That might mess up the face tracking. So what can I do? Professional studios in such cases either use LED or infrared cameras. Using that, the face will be bright in any light. I don't have one, but I borrowed this smartphone light from my girlfriend. Right now, my face is not evenly lit. Look at how it's going to change now. Cool, right? Yeah, I know, it looks super silly, but it all really, really works. And I can't wait to show you the first results of it all. Unfortunately, right now I don't have much to show you, but at least let me show you one last thing. What Ellie's head would look like roughly in my short film. This is the references I used, and this is what I came up with. The hardest thing for me was to reproduce her hair. If any of you have watched one of my worst videos where I tried to create hair, then you know that at the end of that video I created something scary. Oh god, looks awful. But thanks to the new features that came with Blender, I now have something that looks like real hair, which is very cool. But for now, yeah. So far, here's this little teaser of my version of Ellie. So, I hope you've been interested, and in the next video I'll show you some more stuff. Maybe how I animate metahuman bodies in Blender, or the facial animations. Don't know right now. 
As for Ellie, when I'm done creating her in Blender, I'm going to transfer her to Unreal. I'll show you that as well. So yeah, subscribe to follow the development of my short film, please like this video if you enjoyed it, and bye everyone!